What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Coffee Pod. My name is Chishi Zed. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. He's big on appearance. Woman who claims she dated Michael B. Jordan suggested things went left after answering his Skype call wearing a bonnet. So guys, I thought this was a really interesting story that one of my subscribers sent to me that seems to sort of be going unnoticed. Now, this article comes from Atlanta Black Star. You have this chick here who gives one of these like story time videos. You guys know how it goes, the ones with women on camera talking about a dating experience. And in this case, we have a woman who claims that she dated Michael B. Jordan. Now listen, you're gonna wanna stay for the whole video because I believe there's some real gold nuggets we can take from this story, especially on the topics of like dating in our modern day, et cetera. Some real interesting stuff. So you gotta check out this article real quick. I'm gonna read a little bit of it. It starts out with saying, Michael B. Jordan may have a long list of women waiting for him to give them a chance, but the ladies should make sure they fit his criteria before shooting their shot. So from, the, from what I've just seen so far, that criteria is probably them drinking coffee along with them not wearing bonnets out in public. We're gonna get into that, man, because the bonnet thing is a topic that black men in specific have stressed. For so long, we had the situation where Monique spoke out about it and also spoke about like, why are women today wearing bonnets everywhere? It's not presentable. And apparently the sexiest man alive, right? According to People's Magazine, doesn't like the bonnets either. But before you guys cast your judgment, you're gonna wanna hear the rest of this video. So the next part of this article reads, a YouTuber by the name of Becoming Chanel recently made a 28 minute video alleging that she used to date people's sexiest man alive before he reached high status and before he dated ex-girlfriend Lori Harvey. So we have a chick here who used to date Michael B. Jordan during the time where he was on his climb. During the time when the women thought he was corny, right? That's not me saying that. That's literally the topic that was viral there for a second. And everybody was talking about this idea of men who are on their purpose, men who aren't out here making irresponsible decisions, right? The guy who's not the fun guy being labeled as corny, lame, etc. Now, when I saw this and I saw the YouTube name, I said, you know, why not go search this chick and actually hear her tell the story for herself? Now, I'm about to play that story time for you guys, and I did my best to cut out all the unnecessary details. No offense to the chick who actually told the story. Like 89% of my audience are male, and you know, man, we don't want to hear about the details about what you're wearing and you know, how you felt about such stuff. But I cut out the story so you guys can hear it for yourself. This is her telling her experience dating Michael B. Jordan before he was famous. And she also admits that she dropped the ball and had too much of an attitude and stood him up. Yes, stood him up. But there's more uh, behind that story. No more wasting time. Let's get into it. And we met on Facebook. And if I recall, he initially reached out to me, um, and I believe so, started texting and things like that. 2008. Um, and then as the relationship progressed, he eventually asked me to come see him in LA. He got hot and heavy quick. Like that chemistry was instant mm. and we were just infatuated with each other was it like love and everything nah we were young it wasn't that was it uh, but it was definitely like lust and infatuation and it was very quick very fiery very instant all mm. of that stuff and i remember him being in um san croix and be like oh i wish you would come here and i know we talked about uh like i talked to him that whole weekend that or like that whole time of his trip we were right. talking morning noon and night like all the time and i remember we talked about me moving in with him and getting a puppy and all this stuff like all this stuff so i mustered up whatever money i had <laughs> to get there because i was back home with my parents i didn't have any money he was at the time kind of in between jobs the first thing i've always heard is he doesn't like black girls but clearly i'm like blacky black black hair wrapped up in a bun we like i'm i'm black okay mm -hmm. and we dated so that's clearly not a thing you know what's crazy about this is even if 
Even though we know she just said that right now, there's still people out there who still figure out a way to... Because the big thing with Lori Harvey, people would say, oh, it was a PR stunt. He was doing it just for the tabloids. He was doing it for his image because too many people were noticing that he doesn't date black women. So they agreed to do it for a public stunt. But this is a time when he wasn't famous. And it sounds like this is a time when he was actually struggling a little bit, right? He was on the come up. And so even when he was coming up, he was dating black women. And listen, I'm not Mr. Black Women Should Date Black. No, no, no. I encourage people to go where they're wanted and love. For me, that was black women. And uh, my woman's black. But again, I just think it's, 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 it's real difficult to be a famous black man who's well known within the black community or, or, or you're, you're popular amongst like black celebrities and you um, cater to and entertain black people as an entertainer because you're kind of shunned if you're somebody who's of the mindset of, hey, I'll, I'll date whoever shows me love. You're not allowed to do that. And I think that's definitely unfair. But again, here he was coming up, not popular, not famous, dating black women. So what's the excuse for this? Let's keep listening. He does date black women. Um, the other thing was that, that I've been hearing recently like he's a square or like he's some punk or pushover that's not the case like society will have you thinking that a man is less than a man because he's not wildly aggressive or walking into every room talking about i'm a man that's not the case mike even at our young age 19 20 21 he was very sure of himself his mm. goals and what he wanted to obtain yeah like then again we were hot and heavy I was heavy on nothing to do with a celibacy. So, and that's another thing I've heard people, and I, I won't get in that because that's not his business, but whatever you that's heard about slow. him not packing, that's not accurate either. Oh, shit. He's no punk. <laughs> he knows what the hell he's doing. Okay. Um. Listen, it'd be the quiet ones, the, the good guys that y'all sleep on that are amazing. Okay, I'm gonna put it like that. So then um what else what else i remember he didn't have no money either so i had to buy her in and out <laughs> to me i always knew because of the conviction that he had i always knew he was gonna be successful like i always knew he was gonna accomplish everything he had like i'm surprised he hadn't opened that tapas restaurant yet like because because of how sure he was of himself it's mm -hmm. very easy to believe like everything that he set his mind to he's gonna achieve I want you guys to really take that in. You know, at one point, Michael B. Jordan couldn't even afford in and out for him and his girl. And think of how inspiring that is, that men can set goals. And if you are somebody who is focused and you dedicate yourself and you're not out here on stupidity and you, you're a man who's sure about your purpose and you're unwavering and making sure that you accomplish what you need to get done, you can change your life. The hard work pays off. Side note, I'll try not to pause it anymore, man. It's just very inspiring let's keep listening and one thing about mike that i am gonna say you have to be on your p's and q's he is very observant he is big on appearance and <laughs> he wants his woman to, women to look a certain way mm. and at that time i didn't care nigga i'm waking up at five four o'clock in the morning to talk to you before you go back on set i don't give a damn i'm not taking this bonnet off i'm not putting on no makeup i'm not doing none of that so we kind of that's where our issues started coming about because i'm like right because his friends who are on set with him will like come on and they want to see who he's talking to and stuff so now looking at it like yes girl go put on the face and brush your hair out so you can look you know your man's trying to show you off type of thing but i wasn't thinking about it like that so wow we would get into conflict because he'd be like why you still got the bonnet on sis <laughs> like what are we doing why would you still do that Guys, this is so important. This is so important not to just gloss over this very quickly. This is why I love the topic of modern dating. And I think it's such an interesting thing because you would think that a celebrity or a man who has a little bit of status, you know, he, she says he was on set. So he was filming. She knew he was in Hollywood. And you would think that they're not dealing with the same issues you may be. Again, a lot of black men have spoken up about like women and bonnets. 
and it seems to be a thing of um, I dress for myself, I don't dress for you. Regardless of who the man is, we see men dealing with the same type of bullshit. When are women going to realize that if you have a man, you dress 99.9% of the time for him, especially in situations where you have to make a good impression? It matters to a man, you know, especially a man who is of high status or wants to ascend in status, which I believe is all men. And it just doesn't look good. It does not look presentable. But what's crazy, we have Michael B. Jordan here dealing with the same thing. Let's get back into it. And then from there, um, it just started to fizzle. We would fight often, but not our fights were never disrespectful. And I really can't remember all of them, but it would be like I would go out with my girls and mm. he'd just be like, so you're not going to hit me all day? And he would, he's very responsible. He's very respectful. His parents raised him amazingly well. So he would be like, Chanel, where are you at? Like, why are you still out? It's two o'clock in the morning. You need to go home. Like, who's with you? You know, stuff like that. And I'd be like, Same you shit. can't tell me what to do. It was my mouth. Okay? Wow. It was definitely my mouth. Um... So yeah, it was just, it ran its course. And then I, again, my- It didn't run its course, it was your mouth. Like you said, it was your mouth. You said it. And I still lived in Houston. He still lived in LA. Things were starting to pick up for him. Like around that time he got picked up for like Friday night lights. And then um, he was starting, it was that snowball was starting to happen. Like everything that he'd been working for, it was starting to happen, it was starting to come about. Mm. So we were still talking on and off, but it wasn't like as heavy as it was because I was doing my own thing. And of course he was working. And I remember I had decided to move to LA and I hit him up. And this is how we totally fell off. Mm. I hit him up and I was, and he responded. Right. I was like, I want to see you. I'm in LA. Da, da, da. And then he was like, all right, bet. All right, I, I think I was like talking trash to him because he used to play spades all the time with like his homeboy, um, is that Sterling. Is that his name? I cannot. I can't remember names, but he used to play spades all the time. So I was talking stuff noise to him, and I was just like, ah, you know, I can beat you in spades. Da, da, da. He was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. He's like, why don't you come over tonight um, so I can see you, whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. And we made plans to see each other, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not thinking anything of it, okay? We're gonna hang out, it's not that big of a deal, whatever. I ended up getting sick that night. I had seizures as like a teenager and a young adult, I had seizures. So I ended up having a seizure and I was too embarrassed to tell him that I had a seizure and I got sick and I really couldn't drive and go over there. So I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And he had texted me his address. He kept calling me like, what's up with you, da 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 Stood him up. And I didn't come. So once I came to, like, woke up and I was feeling better, I ended up trying to hit him up and he ignored the hell out of me. Come to find out, he had to leave town the next day to go shoot, like, I think in another country or something. And he was going to be gone for months, like, so he wouldn't see his friends, all that other stuff. He had skipped out on plans with his friends to see me and hang out with me. So that nigga was mad. <laughs> like he was so fury he did not wow. speak to him again he was so damn mad at me and rightfully so because i should have just been a woman enough to let him know hey i have seizures i got really sick i'm very sorry i apologize but that's why i can come communication would have resolved a lot of things but because i didn't know much about anything i just didn't tell him and he was angry and he didn't know the reason why. He just thought I stood him up and then he missed out on hanging out with his friends. I went on about my life. He went on. Okay. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Jim, we have to talk about this one right here. Let's look at this from, from, from Michael B. Jordan's perspective. In this relationship with his chick, his career is taking off. At this point, he is a celebrity. He's famous. Still getting stood up by modern women. 
Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Real quick, man, if you've ever been stood up by a woman, I want you to remember that even celebrities get stood up. Now, you may, you may say, she, she was sick, she, she had the seizure thing. We're going to get to that. Even celebrities get stood up by women. This is how much access these women have to high status men. I was listening to Fresh and Fit a little while ago. I saw um, a few other YouTubers on there. I think it was uh, MJ, Get Right, and Fit X, um, and um, Austin were on the panel. And I think it was Austin who said something about how, depending on where you rank as a man, I'm getting somewhere here, follow me. Expect that you will usually attract a woman two points lower than you. So if you're a seven, you're most likely going to attract like fives, average fours. If you're a 10, as a guy, you're going to attract uh, eights, sevens, like consistently. And who attracts the tens or the nines, right? The, the really attractive chicks. Celebrities. They do. And so he had this uh, dating scale, the way he ranked men was he said, because men attract at least two points lower, then men should be ranked from a one to 12. And I thought that was really interesting. I say that to say, why do you think this woman thought that she didn't have to explain herself? Listen, guys, I want to believe her. But you know, we are men of awareness on this channel, man. We've drink too much coffee. I've had too much coffee. It's too late. It's too late for me. We are men of awareness on this channel. I, I want to believe her, but I just find it a little bit too convenient. She may be telling the truth, man. This is not me calling her a liar, but from what I know, I don't think a woman would have shared this story if she didn't have some convenient way of not um, painting the fact that she missed out on an opportunity and her saying, oh, I was sick and I had these seizures, but she might actually have the seizures. But I'm just being very honest with you. It's hard for me to believe. It's hard for me to believe because let's say she didn't have the seizure. It would be, yep, I ignored him. And yeah, I dropped that ball. Then there'll be a bunch of people saying, oh, you effed up. Look at him now, right? It's tough. It's, it's hard for me to believe that, man. But anyways, let's say she is telling the truth, but she still didn't even feel the need to clarify or explain to him like, hey, I stood you up because such and such. I want you to imagine, man, your, your face is on billboards. You're starring in movies. Women are screaming when you walk into the room. The chick you're setting a date up for while these chicks are screaming to you, throwing themselves at you. And the woman you set the date up for to meet in real life, the woman you want, you're shooting in another country the next day. You cancel plans with your boys. You, you're a star, bro. The woman you set the date up to meet you stood you up. Hold on. Gotta do it have to some of you know this coffee smells like shit this coffee smells like shit but back to my point i believe she still should have said hey this happened this happened not just like <laughs> you ignore the dude this is what turns men to villains and my whole point i want to get across to you guys is if she was that attractive especially at that time trust and believe she had other celebrities in her dms musicians ballers athletes etc these women even when dealing with celebrities play games but guys this should be empowering you take stuff like this and you, you use it to encourage yourself the next time you shoot a shot at a chick and she stands you up or she ignores you whatever remember that even the men you look up to or the men you think have it all they get the same type of treatment so what's so crazy about um relationships and, and, and intersexual dynamics is man it transcends status to a certain extent they are dealing with the same things maybe not to the same degree but it's the same problems especially in today's day and age with modern women let's get back into it about his we had no communication and then he had creed and i would literally see him every damn where now mind you that wasn't the only movie it was already fruitville station, station. Yeah. and baby started shining so he's doing his thing doing what he always said he was going to do what he was destined to do and it was just picking up regret and i would see this man all the time on social media on commercials and i was just like damn all the time but when creed came out it was like a whole different beast i was every moment of every day he was on my timeline i would see him all the time and so i ended up hitting him up and i was just like i'm so proud of you like i'm very proud of you hey she did come with the receipts though right there mr jordan i don't mean to bother you i just can't seem to escape seeing your face everywhere 
laugh out loud. Damn, that must feel that must feel good, man. You get stood up by some chick and now she's seeing your face everywhere. <laughs> See, that's why I had to talk his shit at the red carpet with the last chick who called him corny. Like, oh yeah, what's that shit you were talking about? All right, let's keep reading. It says, and I wanted to reach out and offer my congratulations with the exclamation mark. I know you hate my guts, she says, rightfully so, but I'm happy that the world is acknowledging everything you've worked so hard to achieve. He responds and says, appreciate the thought and love. Sheesh, cold. <laughs> Serving up some coffee, man. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. <laughs> oh man, this is kind of satisfying to read. And this should be motivational for you guys. You know, the chick who stood you up is now trying to get a hold of you any which way she can, WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, hitting you up, hitting her with the one-liner. And so she responds and says, no problem writing a, a, an essay, uh, a two-piece with the two messages there. Thanks for not spazzing on me for the random message, LOL. And since you seem to be in a seemingly good mood, laugh out loud, I wanted to say I apologize for not communicating with you and messing up your plans the last time we were supposed to see each other. I know it's been years, but I just wanted to put that out there. So she's apologizing here. He responds and says, you don't owe me anything. All good. Damn. My man turned cold. This, this might have been his RP moment, man, where he said, man, F these 304s. This might have been the moment where he truly became RP aware. When he realized that there is only one way to deal with women who show you that they are ungrateful and take you for granted. Let's keep let's keep uh, listening. Um, you've accomplished everything that you set out to, and you know I know we haven't talked in a long time, but I just want to say you know congratulations. And this was on WhatsApp, and surprisingly his number was the same. And so he responded, and he was just like, "Thank you." And I tried to make small talk, and that wrapped up pretty quickly because the nigga was pissed, was still pissed off at me. He don't let shit go. I do remember that about him. <laughs> I don't know if that's changed. But of course he's not going to let it go. You know why men don't let stuff like that go? Because they experience it all the damn time. And women don't realize it. This is something men go through all the time. Women standing up men. Women don't usually experience this to the degree that men do. So the fact that it happened probably to a chick who he wants at a time, um, you know, was was in a relationship with and she stood him up at his ascend and, and almost his peak. Highly, 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 highly triggering. I know, oh my, ne forgiveness is not strong on his list of things to do. Like, he'd rather not deal with you anymore than to try to forgive you for your nonsense. So that didn't go anywhere else. And I think I tried to slide back in there and shoot my shot again and he, he shot it down or ignored Damn. me. Damn. And then I, I left alone. We never spoke again after that. <laughs> so that was my story of how I dated the sexiest man alive. What I learned from it, though, confidence. I had a lot of confidence when I was younger. Like, I was big. Keyword, when you were younger. Listen, guys, I don't mean to get on this chick's line, but listen, I do want to give her credit. Because listen, she has been very respectful with how she's told the story. She's not painting him in a bad light. But with that being said, she realized that um, when she was younger, she had all that confidence. And now as she's getting older, that wall's approaching. She's probably up there too in age. How old is Michael B. Jordan? Like 39? Let's see. Yeah, 36. I don't know why I thought he was, you know, I think it's all the women who like say, oh, he's like 40 years old dating Lori Harvey. Um, you know, they exaggerate everything. The man's only 36. So, I mean, in men's years, that's awesome. In women's years, women. <laughs> That's uh, it's kind of sad. Very fearless. If I said I was gonna do something, I was gonna do it. There was nothing in my mind that told me I could not achieve or do anything that I set my mind to. And because of that, I typically achieved everything I set my mind to. So that's a, a strong takeaway for me to get back to that person or to take that trait and get my strength back, my confidence back and know my worth. Um. The other thing that I remember and that kind of stood out to me is having a man that has goals, knows what his goals are, mm -hmm. is very adamant about achieving them. And then also 
motivates and encourages you to achieve yours goes a long way too. Um, I hadn't looked for that in every relationship, but thinking more about that relationship with him, super important. Another thing, um, be honest. <laughs> when I had the seizure, I could have eliminated a lot of issues by just telling him what it was. He, his character is not, he's not a mean person. Um, he's understanding. So there's really no reason. I was just embarrassed, but there's really no reason why I shouldn't have told him. And, um, I missed the carefree dating. Like that relationship was, like I said, so lighthearted mm. and like there was no pressure or like anything. Like I missed that. I haven't had that type of dating situation in so long. I missed the hell out of that. Um, and I think the biggest lesson that I would give to you guys out of this story time is don't sleep on the nice guys, okay? Mike was never a punk. He was never a pushover. He was just respectful and he knew who he was even from that young age and he carried himself as such. And you're gonna pass up on some really good men trying to go after the guys that, you know, have all the bravado and, you know, the he-mans and stuff because the world is telling you that the responsible, respectful man is a simp. That ain't the case. He was an amazing man then. I'm sure he's an amazing man now. He definitely liked black women. But you didn't respect him back then. I mean, it's the same thing. I, I got to keep it real. You didn't respect him back then. You respect him after he got to where he's at now or now that you're valuing somebody who's more responsible. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And overall, man, I hope people listen to what she says and they realize it. Men who are responsible and in the end, men who set goals, you know, instead of you chasing after Pookie, et cetera, and complaining about it later on in life, that's the guy who wins in the very end, in life, in life. And guys, you know, I'm not about being a nice guy. I never tell guys to be nice. I tell guys to not be pushovers. So I understand she's like conflating the two different um, definitions. You can be, because the problem with being nice is, you know, being nice is based on you wanting to please everybody around you. But he definitely didn't sound like that type of a person. He just sounded like somebody who was kind, respectful, but also um, knew when to walk away. Case in point, her situation and experience with Michael B. Jordan. I'm pretty sure he still does. Um, and it was cool. It was a good experience. I have nothing bad to say about him. All right. So that's it. Overall, I think she did um, a good job with being respectful and sharing the story and didn't paint him in a negative light and speaks to her character speaks to his also um, reputation with the people that he has actually dated and i think there's a lot to take from this but guys listen that's about it as always i'm curious you know what do you guys think of the story that was shared if your comments down below man i'm curious to know what you guys have to say about this story i thought this was pretty interesting and surprisingly not really picking up in traction what do you guys think of this whole story i'm curious leave your comments your thoughts down below till next time I'm out. Peace.